Anna in Savannah is on the line. Anna, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. Um, I am wanting to transition from um, a well-paying government sector job to operate my mobile shave ice business that we started um, earlier this year. And my customers are begging me to be open more and have a more consistent location. But because of my full-time job, I'm unable to open consistently. Um, And I feel comfortable paying for rent um, for a more permanent structure if I keep my government job. Um, But I still won't be able to open more often. And so I'm just struggling with how do I make that transition from a secure job to um, something that is unknown. Yeah. Well, the first thing is you can't let your customers make your decision for you. So you've got to say, all right, I appreciate the customers. Uh, this is what we would call positive pressure, right? But mm-hmm. we've got to, we got to make the numbers work. What do you make in your government job? Um, 76,000 annually. All right. 76 K. And, uh Excuse me, I'm folks. I've got allergies, and there ain't any way around this, Joe. I got a cough. All right, so everybody relax. I'm 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 COVID free. Sorry, coming right back to you, Anna. All right, I just muted the mic, Anna, so you didn't have to hear me cough in your ear. Aren't you grateful for that? (laughs) All right. So, what do you make? What's your total net profit after expenses on this side hustle? Um. So after this year, um, we didn't. Uh, we haven't generated a net profit yet because um, we we invested um, heavily on the front end. We had to buy the mobile unit and all of the things. A lot of startup. Okay. Um, this year. All right. Well, give me your gross. Um, give me your gross. Your gross revenues. Um, we've made forty five thousand this year. All right. So forty five in gross revenue next year. You're not going to have all those capital outlays, right? And also, too, yes, sir. And next year, I will be able to be open more. Mm-hmm. If I quit, you know, if I made the transition. Yeah, but you can't quit. You know why you can't? Well, let me ask a couple other questions. Do you have any debt? No, sir. All right. And are you double income? We are. What's yeah. your husband make? He makes um, 55000 a year. Okay. So you're the bigger breadwinner there. Okay. 55 k And um, you can't lose that revenue right now. You can't lose your income. Correct? I can't. Okay. No, sir, I can't. All right. So the answer is you you can't you can't go full time. So there's two answers to your question. You can't go full time until you're making close to seventy six, you personally paying yourself out of the company. Okay? So round numbers, you brought in gross forty five K last year. You you would have to you would have to double, maybe triple the revenue. I don't know what your operating costs are per month, but you're, you you just do the numbers. What does it cost for you to operate each month? All right, not paying you, just your operating costs. So you're gonna have to grow that business to that point for you to be full time, uh, or you're going to have to uh, get really serious in some other areas of your life, cut some expenses, change your lifestyle, uh, save some money really aggressively, and then you could go part time you know, on your job, but you're going to have to change your financial situation in order to be able to do this thing full time. Does that, does that make sense to you? It does. So now you now, but here's the other, the other answer is if your customers want more of you and you can afford the rent, you don't have to quit the government job. What you're going to have to then do is you're going to have to train somebody. You're going to have to hire somebody to be in the shop as long as you would be in there. So you are the CEO you're the founder, and you train somebody to do what you would do if you weren't in the government job. That's the only other option. Is that doable? That you stay in your government job, and via you know you can check in once or twice a day or whatever, still still do your job, and nights and weekends you you know you're you you might be able to check in, but you train somebody to run the business. Is that doable? I think it is. Um, the only thing that I would worry about is if something happened, um, I wouldn't be able to go up to the store. Well, you wouldn't need to because yeah. you trained somebody to do what you do. Okay. Well, give me an example, just so I know that I'm I'm not being cute. I don't want to be cute with that answer. Give me an example of something uh, happening. So, uh, like if the ice shaver um, machine breaks or something like that. 
Not a problem. But like a repair. You don't need to be. Need to. You don't need to be there. You know why you don't need to be there? Because you have trained them to do what you would do in that situation, which is either A or B or both. You would take a look at it because you know the machine and you've kind of a novice amateur, you know, expert on it, and you would you would mess with it yourself and fix it, or you would immediately call the repair person and the repair person comes out. Both of those things you can delegate to somebody else, yes or no? Yes, you're right. Isn't this free, Nana? Don't you feel freer all of a sudden? You don't have to be there. You can train somebody to do what you would do. And that means yes. you can open up longer, which means you make more money, right? Yes. And the more money you make, the quicker you get to leave the government job, right? Right. All right, so make some sacrifices where you need to make sacrifices to save more money so that you can get at least six months of your current salary in that bank account of your company. And that, to me, would be the earliest you can go full-time. Okay. Well, you understand? When you've got enough money in that bank account to pay you at least six months, and then with your full focus, if you walk away from the government job, you feel confident you don't have to worry about the next six months because it's spending up enough revenue that you can pay yourself a salary out of it. Right? Yes. Okay, so and to be honest I like with that you, idea. I know you do, and 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 let me tell you something: you deciding to replace yourself right now, not as the owner, not as the founder, Anna, but as the chief worker, right? The manager. Right. You need to replace yourself as the manager. You're still the CEO. You're still the founder. But you need to replace yourself as the manager. That's how you get where you need to go. You make the customers happy. You make more money. And then you get to eventually step into it full time. So that's that's the path forward for you. And you have got to learn to trust people. And the only way you're going to trust people is by coming up with a real plan to train them on everything that you would do if you were in there as the manager. And once you train them on that and you know they're good people, high quality people, high integrity, high character, well, then you don't have to worry about anything. So that's all that's necessary. But this is going to take a, a a a good amount of trust, okay? But you got to trust yourself and how you've trained people, okay? And you got to trust your instincts and your research that you've hired high character people. There's nothing else to worry about. But if you don't hire a high character person, they're not going to do what they're told. If you hire a high character person or multiple people, maybe it's two part time people equal one Anna, in that manager role. Don't overthink this, folks. Replace yourself. You're not the only person that can do what you do.